The Muslim Legal Fund of America was founded in 2001 by a coalition of civil rights activists seeking to readdress systemic discrimination against American Muslims in the dawn of 9-11. 9-11 had yet again changed America for all Americans, changed how Muslims are perceived around the globe for American Muslims. Home felt like anything but home. We were reminded again that our constitution was not for all. Our laws were changed and our American values that are at the foundation of our nation's strength and security once again became exclusive. Our government engaged in systemic policies of indefinite detention, warrantless and mass surveillance, racial, religious, and other forms of profiling and discrimination that still 20 years later remain at core elements of our US national security strategy. Our laws, our values were eroded and suddenly, yet again, not everyone belonged. We were reminded again that not everyone in America is American enough to feel safe in America. For two decades, our tra track record spoke for itself. We intentionally stayed behind the scenes as we welcomed cases that no one wanted to touch. MLFA's responsibility was to continue to step forward with courage when everyone else stepped out. We have raised over $25 million to date to secure the highest quality of legal representation for individuals facing adverse immigration, civil and criminal challenges in the guise of national security. We opened our legal fund for imams, for community leaders, for activists, for organizations, or for any American Muslim the community believed was being treated unfairly by our legal system. Unlike nations across the globe, we here in the United States of America have the ability to influence our government, to set precedents, to fight the good fight. Change takes time, but ignorance is not an excuse. We have a collective responsibility to the world to stand tall and to stand against any and all injustices that our brothers and sisters are facing all day, every day. We know that we must strategically respond with continued courage, not just react with hurt and anger. And that is what we are doing here at the Muslim Legal Fund of America. Our mission was redefined in 2019 is to advance equality and justice for American Muslims and Muslim organizations by promoting legal compliance and protecting their rights in matters concerning national security law. The theme of uh, citizens on probation, which is the theme of how Muslims ha are treated, uh, both in the United States, I would say, and in many different uh, locations around the world. Uh, meaning our citizenship uh, is not equal, uh, we're not treated equally at, uh, uh, at the court in the legal uh, domain. Uh, we're not treated equally in civil society. And uh, Muslim community, uh, communities across the country are expressing uh, the feelings that they have uh, by uh, various surveys that uh, can give us an indication of where we are. In a recent survey that we have uh, conducted, uh, some 80 percent of the respondent this is a survey of uh, 1614 individuals uh, 80 percent of the respondent uh, said that they feel either strongly insecure or somewhat insecure uh, for their family and kids uh, this was one of the most shocking uh, findings uh, from the survey uh, normally you will get uh, in the five to ten percentile of individuals that would respond as such. But to see such a drastic uh, expression of individuals uh, saying that they feel insecure. More importantly, uh, that across uh, many areas, uh, Muslim women find themselves uh, uh, at the uh, intersection of both discrimination and violence, in particular Muslim women who wear the headscarf but also Muslim women uh, in the workplace uh, feel unsupported, uh, feel that they are demonized, 
uh, and constantly engage both either that they are uh, perceived to be oppressed, a whole long-term orientalist trope, or that they are also being seen as object of exotic engagement. So this is a serious uh, element relative to Muslim women. Uh, in some uh, other studies that we have done, uh, many Muslim women in, in public space are actually gets assaulted, uh, often by men. Uh, but yet we don't see the society come to their rescue. When we speak about the broader term of Islamophobia, Muslims face prejudice, discrimination, exclusion, and violence. MLFA's work is so critical. Uh, we see ourselves as the uh, main organization that works uh, in the area of national security. We take the cases that involve some element of government intrusion and some uh, element of government targeting of the Muslim community in relations to issues of terrorism. If you ask Muslims, they will actually inform you that they are familiar with the concept of government entrapment. They're familiar of preemptive prosecution. And for sure, many are familiar with material support. These are the a cluster of uh, legal cases that have been thrown at Muslim communities across the country. So Muslims, in similar way to other communities of color, and I think in here, our black brothers and sisters across this nation, uh, the civil rights and human rights discourse have been written on their bodies and in their, in, in their experiences on a daily basis. And not to exceptionalize uh, the Muslim uh, narrative, America has a long, complex, entangled uh, history with uh, communities of color, the black community, indigenous communities, the Chinese community, Japanese, and so on. So as we are attempting to rewrite the wrongs, uh, to uh, defend ourselves in the court and to defend ourselves in civil society, we seek to do it in partnership uh, that to lift all uh, those who have been marginalized and have been violated uh, by our uh, legal system. And I always say in, to, in, my, to, in my classroom uh, that the primary violator of the human and civil rights of uh, communities have been the policies of government. And as we challenge it in the court and in the policy arena, our collective hope that we will make America better I am for a uh, commitment to partner and to engage in strengthening the Muslim community through partnership, through collective effort uh, to make uh, our society a much more fair, equal uh, domain for everyone to actualize their future horizon. The work that you're doing at um, MLFA is not just actually trying to help America, help the United States become a place of belonging for mu Muslims, but really to live up to the highest principles of the United States. In a sense, I would say the work you're doing is the work of real patriots, uh, because unlike many people, you embrace the full breadth of the American promise and dream. The United States is sort of a country, maybe like most, but uh, built on contradictions. Um, we all heard, you know, the Declaration of Independence, that famous phrase that all men we need to correct that, all people are created equal, that we hold these truths self-evident. We hold these truths self-evident. No proof necessary. You're not on probation. Everyone is of equal value. Now, the author of that was, of course, Thomas Jefferson, who had more than 200 slaves. Uh, so there, there lies the contradiction. And that contradiction has haunted the United States from its inception to the day.